Kia Harvey, the, the latest signing for the EFC. Welcome to the show, buddy, all the way in Scotland. How are things going? Nice to meet you. Things are going very well, mate. It's nice to meet you too. You are on your way to the EFC reasonably soon. I, I, I'm going to get into all of that. I just want to find an opportunity to kind of see who you are and how this all came about. Um, I see you've got a couple of teammates we would know, such as uh, Danny Henry is a big one. Uh, just just talk us through who you are and, and, and where you're training at the moment. So, like you said, my name's my name's Keir, Keir Harvey. I'm 23, uh, and I live in central Scotland. So, I live in a town called Falkirk, which is right in between the two major cities of Glasgow and Edinburgh. Uh, and then I train at higher level martial arts, which is in Bathgate, so pretty close to me. Uh, I didn't start out there. I actually started in a gym in Falkirk. Uh, I trained there from 14 to about 20. And then as I turned pro, I made the move over to higher level and obviously never looked back. A tremendous gym. You mentioned, you know, Danny Henry came through, Stevie Ray, guys in the UFC, UFC champions, UFC title uh, challengers. So, yeah, that, that's best gym in Scotland. Uh, now, that was a big big jump in my career, moving, moving to that gym when I did. And it's led me to where I am now. Okay, fantastic. And like I said, there's a couple of familiar faces out of your gym there. Uh, obviously, Danny Henry was was a big one here for us. Stevie Ray, who you mentioned in the UFC, and now he's just signed for the PFL um, as well. I, I want to say Callum Murray was also around there. I don't know if he's uh, still training much these days, but uh, yeah. definitely one we remember as well who fought for Italia here in the UFC. So a nice long relationship with, with you guys over in, in Scotland. You, from from what I've seen, you you've had a pretty long amateur career before you turned pro. Just just talk us through your your amateur career and, and what is the amateur scene like in Scotland? Was it based more traveling through the UK to compete? So it's funny actually the the amateur scene when I was coming up was actually better than it is now. You know, the kind of good shows are few and far between at the minute. There used to be a point where there was three, four good shows and they're all kind of competing against each other for like the best, you know, for like putting on the best shows. And and, and the gym I trained at was a gym called uh, Headhunters and we had our own show. So when I first started fighting, there was always these shows, you know, there was 40 year typically. And, you know, sometimes you, you'd fight and, you would, and then you were matched on the next one two, three months later. So when I, I had my first amateur fight at 16, and then, honestly, it was like hitting the ground running. I used to fight four times a year back then. Even, you know, you, you'd pick up a loss here. You didn't even matter. You were just you were right back into the next show. Uh, so you'd be surprised. I didn't actually go to England that much. As you kind of, as time went on, like nowadays we go to England more and for pro fights you go for England. But, yeah, honestly, the, it was a good competitive amateur scene back, back then, uh, especially my weight class, round about bantamweight. There were so many guys, uh, and it's funny, you know, like I said, I train at higher level now, but it was always really kind of competing against higher level. That was what we all liked, you know, all the smaller gyms were always trying to get your shot at the higher level guys. Uh, and uh, on, like, like, let me think, I had 13 amateur fights. And uh, honestly, in hindsight, I probably would have stayed amateur a bit longer. I think the more you can do there, the better. I just got to a point, I had a weird, a weird dip where I was just struggling to get matchups. Uh, there was plenty of guys, I don't know, I think maybe being in Scotland, once I kind of got to the top of the Scottish ranks, it became a bit harder to get on some English shows. And then I, I, I got offered an opportunity for a, for a pro fight. And I, I just jumped to that. And then, you know, here we are now. I've settled into the pro ranks and, uh, and I'm doing well. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting one. I think some guys tend to to rush the amateur scene quite quite quickly, especially here in South Africa. That's been been a bit of an ongoing problem. Like guys get two, three, maybe four amateur fights and then jump ship straight over to the pro ranks. And sometimes it's it's not always the the best solution. I understand you've got to start earning some money eventually, but it's, uh, yeah. it doesn't always work out. So it, it, 
funny enough, it seems, especially UK guys, American guys tend to spend a longer time in the amateur ranks. So it's, it's interesting to hear the perspective on, on, on how that all works out. So you've turned pro, your, your record's four and one now as a pro, am I correct? Yep. And, 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 and what are the kind of shows you've been, you've been competing in as, as a pro? So my first pro fight, just like in a smaller show down in England, uh, my second pro fight was well, it was like a good sized show in Scotland, but I was the main event of that. I beat a good, a good Scottish level guy. Uh, again, the third one was just on, on a, a, another Scottish show, and then I had a loss, and then I was lucky enough to I got a chance to fight on Cage Warriors, and that's. That's that's the difference there. Like once you get on one bigger promotion, it's like it opens up your profile to them all. Sure. So I, I had the one fight on Cage Wires, coming off a loss, uh, no less. And it, I had I had three teammates on it, so it was kind of you know just they had guys to match, and they were already bringing their team. So it was like you, you got any featherweights? I got slotted in. Got got a first round finish there. Made a, made a big statement. And then, you know, after that, I had Bellator re- reached out. I had now I've got the EFC. So it's like, once you can, can break that seal of getting on a, a bigger promotion and performing, it's like it opens you up to all the, all the other ones. And, you, you know, you don't really want to go back to regional. So it's like, you need to put your time in on the regional shows, you know, especially amateur. And then, you know, some guys are lucky. It's so different. But, it's, you know, especially coming from Scotland, we can go overlooked. So... I fought on some regional shows here, built, you know, I got to 3 0. Uh, and then eventually I, I got, got the call for Cage Warriors, and that, 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 I noticed a big difference with that. Suddenly it didn't seem unreasonable to get on, on any big show. So, yeah, that, that, was, that was a big difference. I want, I want to ask about your last, it was uh, to Kieran Reid. Is he, is he not a, a teammate or a far side of the same gym? Kieran Reid is, is a teammate and, you know, a very, very good friend. He likes to come in with me. <laughs> So he's he's gonna be in my corner for this fight. Yeah. It's funny, you know. It's it's, it's always interesting. You, you're you're a training partner with someone you fought. We have we have some good banter about it. It was a good fight, a really close fight. Uh, and honestly, I've learned so much from Kieran. He's a, a very valued teammate and friend of mine now. So it's funny how it works out. Have you uh, have you got some back in the in the cha- in the training room? Yeah, I will. It goes back and forth. Trust me. <laughs> you got to be careful how you answer that. Eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, Kieran's good. Kieran's a killer. Fantastic. You, you, you mentioned the Bellator that was on the cards for you. Um, obviously, we know COVID has made things pretty complicated. Uh, Bellator Europe's only set to return, kind of. But it's coming up pretty soon, I think. Um, from what I understand, your your opponent pulled out, if I'm not mistaken, and 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 now you're you're headed to the EFC. So just talk us yeah. through what was happening at Bellator and how uh, EFC came about, how, how it all happened. So you know <clears throat> that's a similar situation to Cage Warriors actually, because you know these promotions didn't have like their guys, so Bellators like they're in links with SPG and. With Cage Warriors, it's like some of these bigger English gyms. So for that case, like he was signed to Cage Warriors with a big team, and I was just the guy being brought in, and I've won, I've upset it, and and I've won. Belto was the same guy. That that guy, uh, Azale, trains at SPG, and you know those Ireland cards are heads to SPG guys, and I was just being brought in to fight him. And once he got injured, pulled out. So I, that that's all I really heard. You know, he, he fought on a uh, UAE Warriors for a lower level guy you know got a third round finish so and then suddenly he's injured you know as a young guy seemed to win fairly easily and then all of a sudden he was just injured and that's all I heard it wasn't you know it wasn't the best com- the, uh, communication from Bellator and because he was the guy they were trying to match he was off the card well there was no interest in matching me so you know it's a good promotion Bellator but you know I, I feel valued at the UFC you know, that, that offer came in and straight away I noticed the difference. I'm not just a guy being brung in. They, they are in, they, they, you know, signed a, a extended deal. They're interested in building me up and learning more about me, you know. Like I said, Bells are just a guy being brung in. They, they don't care, you know what I mean? There was no talks even trying to get me rematched. Or it was just, he was off and I was just I was just dropped off like that. So it's not really what you're wanting. 
Uh, I already feel a better, and I'm not even thought for the UFC yet, but just from what I've, what I've noticed so far, and even with like my teammates in the past, you know, they're interested in you. You know, they try and tell your story, and you know, Bellator, big big promotion, or whatever. But you know, you want to feel valued for where you're fighting. You know, you want them to care about you and who you are as a fighter as well, instead of just bringing you in and trying to lose to their guys all the time. You know what I mean? Sure. Sure, I understand one hundred percent. You you mentioned uh, <clears throat> teammates trying to sell your story. You've obviously got quite a bit of insight on as to how things work over here, what the promotions like. I'm sure uh, guys like Danny Henry would have advised you on EFC and how it works, what to expect, and those kind of things. So, so what what have they said about the EFC and and, and what has been their advice for you so far? Honestly, I've heard nothing but good things about the EFC back from, I didn't even know what the EFC was. And, you know, I just, I remember speaking to Danny one day and he's like, I've signed with the EFC, I hadn't even heard of them. And it was this, this really big promotion, you know, in South Africa. And you can tell they've really modelled their approach from the EFC. Sure. But it's like, why would they not? You know what I mean? They're, they're the best best in the world by, by a bit. Uh, and, and with Bundy going, you know, he, uh, he broke his arm and, couldn't train, I like, couldn't train or work for a while, and you know, they were taking care of him. Honestly, every time they've gone, it's always going reviews, so that's why there's no hesitation about about signing on to fight with them. Sure, I want to ask you about your opponent coming up, Tumisang Madiba, who's very well known in these parts, high flying, fast talking, fan friendly. He's going to be a big fan favorite. Obviously, you're, you're, you're in luck. There's no crowds to to chant and boo as you come out as it would be, which never really happens in the EFC. But um, he's he's a massive fan favorite, and, 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 and there's for good reason for that. It's kind of got to do with his pretty wild fight style and, and hard hitting. He's now training with a massive camp here in South Africa. How much do you know about Tumisang Madiba and, and, and do you spend a lot of time studying that or you kind of just rely on, on your own skill, uh, skill set? You're not too stressed about what he does? Really, I, I, all I know about him is what I can see on topology is his record. And I feel like, you know, you've done a good job selling him there, but based on his record alone, I know everything I need to know, you know, because someone that's got a 50-50 record like that, and to be fair, he's followed all the, the best guys Throughout years at 35 and 45, but someone that's been beat nine times will easily concede to be beat a tenth time. Uh, and I will not. You know, you can look. Yeah, I've got losses, but I've never been finished. I've never even been close to getting finished. He would need to finish me to beat me. And so far, no one's done it. It's not saying, I'm not saying it's impossible. He would need to knock me out cold for me to, for me to be done. Because there's not a single ounce of quitting me but there's quitting him. You can be submitted, you can be stopped. Look, I've, I've submitted a bunch of guys, you know. So there, there you go, you know. We can go in. Yeah, he'll be fast, he'll be explosive. But like I said, he only put me out clean. And, and no one's done it. I've never even been, I've never even really been dropped. So I'm not worried about anything. I, he, he will quit before I quit. I know, I know that for a fact. That's, that's all I need going into this fight. I, I, I mentioned stuff about Tumisang Madiba. He's he's obviously been on here a long time, veteran in the EFC, a, a lot of losses, like you said. But like I said, a fan favorite and, and very highly considered in, in, in terms of EFC, especially when it comes to matchmaking. What do you think that, that says about you bringing you straight over high up on the main card against a guy like Tumisang Madiba. Do you, do you believe there's merit for it and that they have they know what you're bringing to the table and, and they've trusted you to put on a performance? Yeah, definitely. I think even just from from the, the team I'm with, especially in, in that weight class, you know, we've got a history of, of, of guys coming in and going for belts, especially yeah. at featherweight. So I think it's perfect saying, you know, they, they could imagine me with a guy you know, with say five or less fights, but I don't think it, you know, it wouldn't do as much for me, you know, I win here and I'm like right in title contention. You know, I think like, I have like literally two wins and I'll be knocking on the door for that belt. So I think it's a perfect matchup. You know, he's, he's like, he's not fought in a little while coming off some losses. So bringing a, a young guy from a, a reputable gym like yours 
you know, it's going to show where he's at. Is he still got it in him? Can he push on for a belt? Or is the younger guy, me from from Scotland, going to going to take out this veteran and push on for a belt? So it really is a win win for them either way. But like I say, I, I I see I see myself winning this, and then we'll build on towards that belt. I think they see a future title contender in me. You talk about title contention. Have you have you had a look at, at at that featherweight division? I know you you said you can compete at thirty five and forty five. Have you have you looked at that division uh, any further, or is it kind of a later problem? Yeah, no. I've, well, like I said, I've not gone crazy into it, but I've looked. You know, I can see since that Brazilian champion beat uh, Cabeça, obviously a very or highly rated Cabeça. He's a great fighter, but it just seemed like I think the, the weight cuts got the better of him. He's He's going to fight up at lightweight, and I think he'll do better at lightweight. Still a young guy, very athletic guy. I think he'll be better off at lightweight. I think maybe a hard weight cut, as he struggled with a weight cut, and then that sure. guy's came in and you know caught him, you know just caught him with a choke. Some similar to Danny, you know when Danny beat him, he had a really hard cut, and he just had no fight in him. I think that was a similar situation here. Seems he's learned and he's moved up. Uh, and I can also see, you know, he's defending that belt in uh, in December. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure on the, the guy's name he's fighting, but he looks to be a good fighter as well. So it's an interesting matchup. Uh, yeah, and I will tune into it. Fantastic, man. I, I, I want to give you just an opportunity, two opportunities, obviously, for the EFC fan base. If we had to ask you, on fight night, what can we expect from you in terms of a fight style? Uh, aggressive, uh, pushing the pace, chasing a finish. You know, I, I've I've finished three of my of my my four pro fights, and and, and the one I didn't was because it, it, it was a ban to me. And at the time, you know, um, I've settled in forty five now. That was more a fight against uh, a weight cut than. Than the opponent, you know, if I was fresh, I would have finished in 10 times out of 10. So when I'm sharp and, and on point and, and feeling good, I finish fights. Uh, and, I, you know, if, if you've had to look at mine, I've got relentless jiu-jitsu. I will find a sub from anywhere. I chase. I don't just look for one sub. I look for 10 and catch one. So I will be going for the finish. Fighting smart, fighting calculated, but pushing this fight and chasing that finish and I promise I'll get it fantastic man uh, some some pretty good messages in there and the, the, the last one from me is uh, what would your message be to let me say your fans locally and, and to those that will be tuning in to the EFC the, the ever growing EFC fan base what would your message be to them just uh, you know keep an eye on me uh, I think everyone kind of knows that I, I come to fight and this one will be no different. Uh, I do hope it, it, it will be a good back and forth fight. I would like it to be a good back and forth fight. You know, I've only, I've not even fought a full round this year. I had one fight and it was done in less than a round. So I wouldn't mind it going to second or third, but we'll see if they can hang in that long. Fantastic. Yeah, Harvey, thank you so much for your time, man. Uh, we look forward to seeing you here. Safe travels. Uh, all the best for the rest of your camp and we'll, we'll see you in Joburg. Some man. Brilliant. Thank you, man. Have a good evening. Ciao, man. See you later, mate.